Okay, let's talk about how to configure stateless DHCP v6 on a Cisco router. Now, DHCP and IPv4 works differently than DHCP and IPv6. So in IPv4, you can assign an address manually or you can assign it statically. It's pretty straightforward. In IPv6, you can assign it manually. You can use stateless address auto configuration. You can use stateless DHCP or you can use stateful DHCP. There are going to be different configurations for all of them. So let's start by talking about our network and then we'll talk about some different configuration options. Now, this, this packet tracer file that I'm using is linked in the description. So you can go there and you can download the packet tracer file. If you have packet tracer, you can open it up and you can follow along with what we're doing. If you don't have packet tracer, well, then it actually won't help you out that much. But you can still watch the demo and get the idea of how it's supposed to work. So uh, here's the network that we've got. I've got a local network here, and this is on my G01. So it's 2001 DB8 ACAD uh, 1 colon colon 1 slash 64 is the router's interface. The network between the two routers is is ACAD colon three. And then this network over here is ACAD uh, two. Now, we're gonna start with this one. We'll tackle this network in a subsequent video. But let's start with uh, stateless address auto configuration. So let me go to my device, uh, one of my PCs here, and we'll set it up and we'll show you how it works first. So this is just stateless address auto configuration. Actually, before I do this, let me show you what I've got configured on my router. So on my routers, pretty minimal configuration, just enough to get what we needed for this demonstration to work. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. I want to do show run. All right, so first off, we've enabled IPv6 unicast routing. Now, I need to do that. Yeah, I mean, you can enable IPv6 on an interface, but it actually doesn't help much unless you enable unicast routing. It's the only way you're actually going to route IPv6 traffic. And that also activates it on all of your interfaces, which is really helpful. So we have IPv6 unicast routing. And then we have our, this is going to be our connection to our other router. So this is going to be our local network. Now, all I have here is an IPv6 address and I have the interface activated. So no shutdown, nothing else. I have no configuration to uh, assign IP addresses to client computers. But if I go to a client computer, I go to its IP configuration, and I tell it that I want to use auto config, it will automatically configure an IP address for me. It will make up its own link local address, and it will configure a gateway. Now, this is interesting. This is stateless address auto configuration. You have to do nothing to configure stateless address auto configuration. What happens is when the router comes up, it's got IPv6 active, it automatically starts sending out router advertisements or RA messages. And these router advertisements basically say, this is my IP address. Use me as your default gateway. This is our network ID. This is our prefix length. Uh, make up your own interface ID. So first half of the address, I'll give you the last half of it you make up on your own. Use me as your default gateway. And so that will configure all of this information on our PCs automatically, and we don't have to do anything to do it. It just works, except it doesn't include a DNS server, and we need a DNS server. So I have two options at this point. I can manually assign my DNS server, which is great if I'm connecting to public networks, but not so great if I'm connecting to a work network where I have to have my own DNS server. So what we do is we use stateless DHCP v6. And basically, stateless DHCP v6, it doesn't work like IPv4 DHCP. So it doesn't hand out addresses. What it does is it just answers the question, who's my DNS server? So let's start by, let's do our configuration backwards. So we're going to go into our interface G01. And we're going to start by setting an ND flag. So remember, we're sending out RA messages or router 
advertisements. By the way, the clients will also send out an RS message, which is a router solicitation. So the RA happens about every five minutes. And an RS message happens if a PC comes online in between that five minute interval, it can send out an RS basically saying, hey, is there a router in the house? And the router will respond with an RA message, your router advertisement says, yes, here I am. Here's our network. Here's my IP address. Use it for your gateway. Here's our prefix length. You make up the rest. So what we can do is we can change this behavior a little bit. And we set it, or we change it by doing an IPv6 ND, and our command is other, and the entire thing is other config flag. Now, by default, we don't have that other config flag. What the other config flag does is it tells the PC or whatever the end device is, when it says this is our, this is my address, this is our network ID, this is our prefix length, make up your own interface. It says, oh, and by the way, send out a request for a DHCP server to give you the other information. And that other information is typically going to be our DHCP or our DNS server. So now what we're going to do, and I told you we're doing this config a little bit backwards to hopefully try to explain how it works together. So now I'm going to create a pool, and it's IPv6 DHCP pool, and I'm going to call this LAN1. Now when we do IPv4 DHCP, the first thing we have to do is exclude addresses. But I don't have to do that here because I'm not tracking IP addresses. I'm not assigning IP addresses. The clients are making up their own IP addresses. They're using my network ID and my prefix length, but they're making up their own interface ID. And by the way, built into the neighbor discovery protocol is a mechanism to check and make sure no one else is using the same IP interface ID or interface ID for their IP address. So all I need to put in here is my DNS server. So I'm going to set my DNS server to 2001 DB8 ACAD1 colon colon 10. And that'll set my IP address. So now I have a DHCP pool that's only going to hand out that DNS. I don't need any other configuration. I mean, I could put a domain name or something like that here. But as far as the IP range and all that stuff, we're not going to use that because that's handled through stateless address auto configuration. We're just adding in stateless DHCP to provide this DNS server address. Now, that's great, but in, when we did IPv4 DHCP, we uh, talked about how it would use the network, uh, the network command in DHCP configuration to say which network this was for, and then it would associate it with the appropriate interface. We don't have that here. So what we have to do is we have to go back into interface G01 and we issue the command IPv6 DHCP server, which tells it you're going to function as a server on this. And then we tell it the pool that we want it to serve from. So if you get a DHCP request, I want you to function as a server on this interface. If you get a DHCP request, give it information out of this pool. So let's exit out of here and do a show run and see what we've got now. So here is my Ethernet, Gigabit Ethernet 01. We're using the other config flag. We're telling this to function as a DHCP server for IPv6. And I missed my, here's my IPv6 DHCP pool, which only has that DNS server address in it. So let me control C out of there. Okay, now let's come back to PC0. We'll go to our IP address and we'll tell it we want it to reconfigure using auto configuration. And now the IPv6 address, it pulls this first part and the prefix length from the router through the router advertisement message. It makes up the last part of this. In this case, with Cisco devices or with Cisco using the EUI64 method, Microsoft devices don't always use that, just to be aware. But the point is, it makes up its own. You don't have to assign it. It finds its default gateway, and it uses that other config flag to send out a request to a DHCP server, which this router is now configured as, and that gives it its DNS server address. So I should be able to go through my other three, my other two. Whoops, wrong thing. Should do IPv6, not IPv4. 
and there's that one and there's that one all right so at this point we're fully functional now for ipv4 we would show ipv4 dhcp bindings here you can do show ipv6 dhcp and you're going to see that we have dhcp bindings but if i try to look for them there really actually aren't any because you know we're not actually using that we see some clients here we see some preferred lifetimes but this is all kind of configured through stateless address auto configuration so we're not tracking bindings in the same way um we can view oops show ipv6 dhcp question mark to give us the right thing we can view our pool and we can see that we have zero active clients well on the one hand that's not true because we actually do have clients but on the other hand it is very true because we're not tracking the information we're using stateless dhcp okay so that's how we configure stateless dhcp for ipv6 now in our next video which will Go ahead and keep this file if you're going to watch the next video because we're going to set up this one using state full DHCP the same way we would in IPv4.